I'm David Eaton, Chair of Economics and Finance. Uh, this is my 20th year at Murray State. I've published in a fair number of traditional journals and had my first open access journal experience a couple of years ago. So I did an article about two years ago that I published through Sage Open Access. Um, it, I liked the idea that Sage was a reputable name. It had a lot of journals that, that were well received in different fields. Uh, and so I, I had, had some confidence in the publisher with that, that it wasn't just kind of a fly-by-night type of thing. Uh, what I liked about the open access piece of it was this particular article was a little odd in that it, it was looking at the teachings of Protestant reformers about wealth and work and other economic issues. And so it really didn't find a home in economics journals. It really wasn't going to find a home in religion or history journals. It was just kind of sitting in, in this kind of academic no man's land. Uh, and so the open access opportunity was nice because they weren't looking for particular types of articles. They weren't looking for articles just on tax policy or this narrow era of history or things along those lines. It was truly uh, interdisciplinary. And so that, that fit really nicely. It was a nice home for that particular article. And after having that article rejected by a few other places because they kind of looked and said, well, it sort of is our area, but it doesn't fit as nicely as we'd like it to. So, so I thought that was a really big benefit of the, the SAGE publication, that um, something that doesn't fit neatly into a really tight academic box found an outlet. Um, in terms of the process, I didn't notice any real difference in the process between publishing in the SAGE Open Access Journal and publishing in any other professional journal. Uh, Really the only thing that struck me as odd, and this was just because I had never encountered it, was they asked me for potential referees. Uh, but that kind of makes sense too, because if you're doing something that's interdisciplinary where you're looking at, at submissions from a wide variety of, of academic areas, you probably don't have the same expertise as the editor of a journal in knowing who would be good reviewers. And, and I don't know if they used those reviewers. Uh, it was, as far as I know, double blind. Uh, I never knew who reviewed the article. I'm, I'm confident they didn't know what article they were, were reviewing or who, who was the author of it. Uh, from the refereeing process, the comments were just as good as anything uh, that I would expect from a regular journal in economics. So the, from that standpoint, there was no, uh, no difference, really, between the open access and uh, a traditional journal. Uh, I think the fee was $99. It was a special that they were running, but the typical fee was four or five hundred. Uh, for economics, not a lot of journals charge page fees, but I have published in some reputable journals that have page fees associated, and and even the the normal price of the journal wouldn't have been outlandish. I mean, it would have fit right in line with the 20-page journal article in a 20 or 25 dollar a page fee uh, journal. So that seemed uh, pretty reasonable to me and and I guess one of the concerns I had going in was will anybody ever read this uh, be, and I was pleasantly surprised when I hit Google Scholar and searched for the article a couple weeks ago that had had two citations uh, already which you know is uh, probably not going to set the world on fire citation wise but also it was nice to see that it it was an outlet where people were looking for research in that particular area and had been able to find that particular paper. So uh, my experience with open access has been very positive. Uh, no significant difference between that and publishing in a traditional journal except the more interdisciplinary nature which worked to my advantage for that particular paper.